Hey guys, as you're here, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the Native Instruments Tractor Control F1 to be used with FL Studio's performance mode. The first thing you want to do is download my F1 template from the description below. You're going to want to open up Native Instruments Controller Editor, select the F1 from the drop down menu here, and then you want to click File, Open Template, open that template, and you're going to see it appear over here on the right side. So basically what I did to set this up was in the latest update for FL Studio that added performance mode, they also added support for the machine controller. And you'll, you can uh, find this template hidden within the uh, FL Studio folders and they ha I'll uh, have the link below. Um, with this uh, template, you can actually view what uh, channels they're sending here. So all I really did to set this up for the F1 was I'm disguising, you could call it, the uh, F1 as a machine. So I copied these over to the F1. Um, so if you look at uh, pad 11 here, for example, it's sending C2 on MIDI channel 16. And if you look at my template on pad 11, C2, 16. Um, so I did that throughout here and I put the transport controls down here, arrows, drum, and session. And then I've got, uh, I left these blank just because I like to have control over maybe effects or, you know, whatever. And you can actually set this up to whatever you want to do. This this template's mainly just to get you started and show you exactly how I did it. Uh, also keep in mind that you have the shift button on the F1 and that'll give you uh, double the amount of keys. Um, so once you've got that uh, template loaded up here, uh, you can exit out of this, go into FL Studio. You're going to want to open up Options MIDI Settings. You're going to want to select the F1, enable it. You're going to want to drop it down and disguise it as the machine controller. <laughs> and then uh, choose the port and then from there you're going to want to send master sync and then choose the same exact port you selected below and then you'll see the F1 light up. Now keep in mind this is an issue I've been having. I haven't really figured out how to fix it but I would imagine you would be able to just add the refresh button that's on the uh, machine controllers template in here and then just hit refresh and it'll refresh all the uh, lights on here but there's definitely something here it's just the pad didn't light up but if you click it and activate it it's going to light up. So it still works. It's just sometimes I've noticed that the lights will not light up when they should be. Um, so now this will work just like any other controller. You can you can activate the pads. And of course, I haven't hit play yet, but if I hit play, then it'll start playing. And then at each measure, the uh, stop button will flash. And then of course, you can click next to the pads and they will stop and you can set that all up. So basically what I'm going to show you is um, in the Tractor Pro software, um, these filter knobs on the F1 are used as filters, obviously, because it says filter on the hardware. Um, so if you if you bring the knob to the left, it's going to be a low pass, and you bring it to the right, it's going to be a high pass. So what I've done is I've set this up except with in FL Studio. Uh, what's nice about these knobs, and they could actually be very useful for this in a live performance, is you always know that you're in the center because there's a click on the knob. So this could actually um, come in handy if you had it on like a master channel and you didn't really plan on doing the high pass and low pass at the same time. So you could actually just say, okay, I want a low pass, I'm going to spin to the left. Okay, I want a high pass, now I'm going to go to the right. And that's all you have to do. And that way you have two functions in one knob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a uh, channel state in the uh, link below. And I can also just include the uh, FL Studio file with this so you can figure it out also. But I'll go into explaining it right now. You don't have to watch this if you don't want to. Just download the link below and tie the controller to it um, if you just want to go straight to it or continue watching and I'll explain it. But uh, basically what's going on here is I've got the knob tied to my dashboard wheel 2. Um, dashboard wheel 2 is tied to both A knobs on my formula controllers. Let's call this one formula controller 1. So for formula controller 1 its output's being sent to wheel 1 here in the dashboard and then that's tied directly to my cutoff frequency on my low pass. So all that's going on here is this is controlling this, we're sending the output, it's doubled, notice, and then that's that's controlling the low pass. So this knob is in the center, if I spin it to the left, it's only half of the knob's turn, but since it's doubled, it's going all the way down. So by the time you get down on here, the low pass is all the way down, and when you go to the center, it's doubled, of course, so it's all the way up on here. Um, and then this, the just the exact opposite thing is going on here. Like I said, wheel 2 is tied to wheel A on formula controller 2, and its output's being sent to wheel 3 in my dashboard, and that's directly tied to the cutoff frequency on my high-pass filter. So obviously if I spin it to the right, it's just going to do the high-pass filter. Um, I really don't 
need this dashboard and obviously if you just let's say you load up the uh, mixer track state it's not going to have this dashboard so let's forget about this all you're going to see is these four things um, what you're going to want to do is you're going to tie the knob or fader whatever you want to use to both knob A on these these formula controllers and then the uh, these will already be tied to here and if they aren't all you have to do is just tie C on formula controller 2 to the high pass and C on formula controller 1 to the low pass uh, cutoff and obviously you don't have to use these for low pass and high pass you could use it for whatever you wanted but this is just so that you can use this setup similar to what it's uh, being done on the tractor pro software uh, I, I appreciate you guys watching um, let me know what you think of this video and if you have any suggestions just let me know in the descri description below um, I look forward to hearing the comments and all that from you guys and uh, I'll see you in my next video